Hello, fabulous friends and fans. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of December the 4th, 2016. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, this week it is all about the sextile. Now, if you are a student of astrology, you know what that means. If you're not a student of astrology, you might be getting a little excited by hearing that word. Well, actually, it's just the name of a conversation that takes place between two planets. It is considered a harmonious conversation, but is one that asks us to take ownership, asks us to do some work. It's more of a conversation, not so much of just blessings showing up, but the blessing is actually in the opportunity, the opportunity to take action that we know can improve our circumstances and improve our lives in at least one area of life. But it's not going to be just one area of life highlighted with this conversation taking place because several planets are having this type of conversation. So what this tells me is a few things. One is the energy of this week is very much going to be one of what can we do? What can I do? How can I make things better? So there's a sense of empowerment this week because of these different conversations, but also there is a sense of if you want things to get better, you've got to do something. So there's also that sense of maybe not necessarily giving it away, not necessarily acceptance, more like, okay, I'm going to take action where I can and I'm going to have faith that's going to count for something and then it does. So several key planets are having this particular type of conversation. One that I absolutely love is the sun speaking to Jupiter. Now the sun and Jupiter are going to be speaking in this conversation of harmony and yet at the same time what is happening is especially as we move later into the week the sun will meet Saturn in the sky. And Saturn and Jupiter are also now starting to dance in this particular conversation. It'll get more precise the further we move into this month, but they are also starting to dance in this particular conversation. Now, I'll talk more about the Sun and Saturn meeting in the sky next week. Ordinarily, you'd see that and you'd think, okay, that is some serious stuff going on there. There's some, uh, you know, real adultness having to happen for all of us. But because Jupiter is standing by, because Jupiter is this week giving the supportive beam to uh, the sun and next week or at least later in the month as we move further into the month particularly the closer we get to the holiday season shopping season however you understand it <laughs> this particularly as we get closer to that we are going to find uh, this conversation tighten between Jupiter and Saturn and this to me does say uh, a sense of yes it may be that we have to look at things and examine things uh, and be honest with ourselves. And yet there is hope. Yet there is empowerment. Uh, yet there is a sense that we can actually take action. There's something we can do to improve our circumstances in at least one area of life. I think we're going to be feeling this week in a whole lot of areas of life because the planets are in such different places as they speak to each other. So this is very encouraging to me. So the sun speaking in harmony with Jupiter, it's like we have all kinds of reasons to have a whole lot of hope. And this really is a conversation of opportunity. A little bit of effort and a little bit of confidence can go a long way towards opening up greater opportunity for us in different areas of life. Also, we are going to have this week Mercury speaking with Neptune in the same type of conversation. As I said, this week it's all about the sextile. That's the dominant conversation now. And this is a conversation of harmony, yet knowing that you got to do something. So when it is Mercury and Neptune speaking this way, it tends to be more about using inspiration so that it counts for something. Now, Neptune is an energy of divine inspiration. It's about being in the flow, allowing yourself to be carried in a direction where ultimately you can leave thinking behind and let another energy take over. Well, Mercury is the energy of mind. It's all about what you are thinking, right? It's very intellectual. So you bring these together and it does suggest with a little bit of, you know, putting a border around things, right? Containing things a little bit. This can be really good for poets. It could be really good for writers, even songwriters at that. If you do anything that relies on inspiration in any way, right? If you practice one of the esoteric arts, right? Like astrology and others out there, this can be a really good week for tapping into some type of inspiration that feels like you are connecting to something that feels like truth, that feels like you are touching on faith 
faith, but you also can articulate that. And it is about understanding that as much as we can have faith and inspiration and we can feel that connection to source, however you understand that, if we can find ways to express that and to communicate that, then so many other people can be better off for it, especially when our connection to source leads us towards being uh, more loving people, more wise people in the world. So that is going to be part of the invitation that is with us now. Also this week, Mars will be speaking in harmony with Uranus. And guess what? A conversation we call a sextile, of course. And this particular uh, conversation in the sky is happening with Mars in the sign of the future and of friendship. Aquarius with Uranus, of course, in the sign of the individual and individual empowerment, passion and direction. So when these two planets are speaking in this type of harmonious connection, there's a few ways that this can play out. One way is, of course, that we ourselves are empowered in some way. We ourselves feel a sense of making a personal change that ultimately will benefit not only our own lives, but we hope the lives of many other people. We'll be noticing a lot of people having this particular type of conversation as well. But also with this uh, particular energy, I think about how just Mars is, is so much uh, connected with that sign of Aries and Uranus is also the ruling planet of Aquarius. So these planets are in what we call mutual reception, which means they're able to work that much better with each other. Uh, they're each hosting the other's ruling planet. So they're working together. They've already got this connection and now they reach out in harmony. So it's like these particular archetypes, these particular energies out there will be able to work together that much better. Aquarius as an energy tends to be very intellectual. It tends to be very ideas oriented, scientific even sometimes, also very intuitive oriented, whereas the Aries energy is just pure intuition, right? It is passion, it is motivation, uh, it is knowing in your heart and acting from that place with a sense of purity and a sense of direction. So when these two come together, not only are these signs connected, but also in mutual reception, they're working together. We can see how right about now our conversations, the ideas we're having and sharing. Uh, the new thoughts, especially the most innovative ideas right now are going to be those that ultimately find this bridge between the individual and more humanitarian efforts or also your individual passion, which ultimately you believe is going to have some higher sense of being good for everyone else, everyone else concerned, whether that everyone else is the people in your lives or even more broadly. This can also be really good for invention of any kind. So if you are somebody who is an inventor or you're sort of scanning the newspapers uh, or the internet, right? That would make more sense with Mars and Aquarius. You're scanning the internet for inventions. This is a time when we can uh, hear some really interesting things transpire, but I really think this is just the beginning. I recently did a talk here in Istanbul at the Astro Fun Fest about 2017, and I'll be talking about that more. Uh, and I'll talk about that more when we get to the get to the middle after the after this introduction. But I'm going to be doing a talk in Kelowna, BC in January. Also, same talk, 2017. Big, big year. And I think that this is sort of a it's some way hinting to some of the bigger breakthroughs that are set to take place with Saturn speaking in supreme harmony with Uranus starting late this month and into 2017 as well. So this can give us a little bit of a preview to say to see which way we are feeling compelled to go, which way our energy is going, which way we're feeling inspired to go. Uh, it can see which way the wind is blowing towards what's likely to make the biggest breakthroughs in terms of inventions and in terms of what ultimately is going to matter most to all of us. What I love about this week is that, yes, there is that sense of, okay, something might not be completely right, but we know that it can be. And from that place, just about anything becomes possible. Now, of course, before I let you go, I also have to say that Venus, Venus is going to be moving into the sign of Aquarius. So this very area where Mars reaches out to Uranus is exactly where Venus is going to enter now, bringing lots of love energy into this particular part of the sky, into the part of the sky that has to do with friendships, 
which has to do with innovation, the future, humanitarian efforts. So we can expect uh, some people hooking up at, you know, rallies and different activism types of activities. Uh, but also, you know, I think this is a love for progress. This is a love for wanting things to be better, believing that they can get better and bringing an energy of love to whatever it is, whatever change you desire to experience, whether it is a change towards greater unity, uh, greater social ideas, or whether it is a change that's more personal, that has to do with living your authentic truth. Bringing an energy of love can only help strengthen these endeavors to become that much more powerful. Thank you so much for watching the introduction. I'm truly so grateful for it. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, thumbs up. It does mean so much. I love interacting with you guys. Please keep it coming. Facebook, Twitter, Google+, my website, NadiaShaw.com, the YouTube comments as well, and my Instagram. I've been growing it. It's been amazing. Thank you for all the love that you've been giving and sharing your spiritual journeys with me on Instagram in particular, Nadia underscore Shaw. That is the official. There's a few accounts out there, but that's the official one. Now, events are coming up, as I already mentioned, as I was doing the introduction. I am going to be in Kelowna, BC in January. It's the weekend of January the 20th, and it is the Friday that I'll be doing the keynote uh, that is uh, all about 2017, the year of the future. And on Saturday of that weekend, I'm going to have a workshop and I will also have a book signing. So I'm really looking forward to meeting friends and fans out in Kelowna. I can't wait. I'm sure it's going to be uh, an amazing uh, moment and very special. I am certain of that. So I really look forward to meeting you guys. And more information about that is at purepowerevents.com. You have to get advanced tickets. Seating is very limited for the workshop. It's expected to fill up. So uh, please do check out that website, purepowerevents.com. And I'll be talking about it in the weeks ahead. I will be doing consultations, a limited number of consultations while I'm out there. So if that's something you would like to have a in-person consultation, half hour or one hour, uh, please reach out through my website, the contact form on my website, NadiaShaw.com. Right now, I'm in Istanbul. I'm only going to be here for like another day or two. And uh, then I will be headed back to Cancun. It is cold here, okay? It's been a few years since, I, uh, since I've experienced cold like this. And, uh, and so it feels cold, yeah. And, uh, but it's all good. It's been beautiful. It's been very meaningful to me uh, to spend time here. And, uh, you know, I think about how earlier today I went to a... A Sufi ceremony, whirling dervishes. And uh, it was very like the audience, the few of us who were there, very silent and uh, observing this entire event. And it started off with just the music, Sufi music, and uh, went on, of course, to the whirling dervishes. And uh, while I was sitting there, I was thinking about how much a part of uh, spiritual experience, spiritual expression includes art and includes expressing ourselves and a desire to know the divine through art. And this is one of the guiding philosophies that we were taught during uh, the course just before the ceremony as we were learning more about this particular tradition. And it ended up being very meaningful uh, and very beautiful as well. And I remembered a little memory I want to share, totally personal, but I remember when I was a little girl, my dad really liked this type of Sufi music called Kowali. And I remember we, as little kids, we would go to these uh, concerts, my brother and I, like we were kids, and uh, we would go to these concerts and, uh, you know, they would just be this, you know, very high energy spiritual experiences, uh, especially for the people on stage and uh you know really legendary people who aren't with us anymore and uh, they would be singing these songs and there would be that beat and the way that you know it starts off slow and then it builds to this crescendo over the course of a few hours and then it it comes back to that place of revol resolution and i just remembered like while i was watching this show how i used to sit in the car with my brother and after these concerts we didn't go that often just a few but after the concerts my brother and i would sing in the car and we would like clap so loud and we'd be jumping in the back seat and talking about uh and actually singing the songs that we had just heard 
uh, it was pretty cool. So there's a nice little memory of remembering that. And also, you know, it's these little moments that remind us that we are not who we are by accident. There tend to be reasons why we become uh, who we become for a variety of reasons, partly our interpretation, but also I think about how this, you know, this love of, of spirituality, this love of matters esoteric, of mysticism, how that has actually been with me all my life and, uh, and expresses itself in this way that it does today. Well, it was, uh, it was very humbling and it was really eye-opening. Like I had kind of forgotten that. Uh, and so I just wanted to share that story with you guys because, you know, I don't think it's an accident that we are here right now at this point in history and time. I don't think it's an accident that we're here right now with me on YouTube sharing and you being present watching this sharing as well, sharing your energy with all of us uh, who are together in this moment. I don't think any of that is an accident. And I think what brought us here as a collective, but also in our individual journeys, what brings us to this place where we want to affirm in the world that the universe is wise and loving, well, that is an accident. There is a lineage, there is an ancestry, an ancestry of thought an ancestry of art that brings us here and I right now in this moment having come from this ceremony uh, I'm feeling very very grateful for that lineage of course I had other things I wanted to say I already talked about the events webinars of course so for now uh, the webinars that have already been done you can download the full videos of those webinars on synchronicityuniversity.com they're super popular thank you so much thank you for loving and continuing to give love to uh, those uh, video downloads I'm so grateful for it and I'm looking forward to being in Baltimore mid-February I don't know I gotta tell you it's cold <laughs> I'm like it's cold here in Istanbul and I'm gonna be in Baltimore in middle of February uh, but that is the commitment that is the commitment that I've made I'm speaking as part of the NCGR conference uh, for 2017 so I hope that you will join me there as well if you are in the area again limited number of consults available if you want please do reach out but I hope that you will attend my talk my talk there will be called astrology realized what makes a reading good so as long as I don't you know freeze on the way from uh, the airport in, the, in Cancun, I'll be flying into Baltimore. And then when I get off, as long as I don't freeze between there and the, and the conference uh, site, we'll be good. We are gonna have this, uh, this presentation take place in Baltimore. And I'm really looking forward to meeting friends and fans out there. I also just wanna give a very quick shout out as well to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you for being there, for supporting me. It's a small group there, but they give a lot of love and I feel it all the time. And I'm really so grateful for all of you out there, whether you are supporting me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Nadia Shaw, or you're here right now. You being here really is everything. As I said, it affirms uh, what I think that we are all here in this moment. You and I watching this, sharing this energy of this experience, uh, are affirming that the universe is wise and loving. We didn't get here by accident, and here we are, and my hope is that this energy of affirmation that the universe is wise and loving just continues to grow and grow and become that much stronger. So you being here really does mean everything to me. It allows me to live this mission, uh, and I'm really looking forward to being part of it, this energy continuing to grow thanks to you. So I will stop there with that. How all this wonderful stuff this week, all the astro goodness this week speaks to you and your sign is coming up right now. Hello, fabulous Aries. This week, your ruling planet Mars will be speaking in harmony with Uranus. I'm super excited about this for you. It says that friends are going to come through for you in big ways to create positive change in your life. So a part of this is going to be practical opportunity. Another part of this could just be the right conversation at the right time that makes all the difference and ultimately helping you to understand what you can do to improve your circumstances and wherever it is that you need to like shake free a feeling of being held down this is where you're going to find the right inspiration and the clarity to move your life in a more positive direction it's not always what you think i gotta say right and that being held down doesn't necessarily mean by any person it could even mean just you needing to understand where you've been so that you can more clearly move towards the future that you want now where it comes to matters of love venus is going to move into a part of the sky for you that has to do with friendships this is really nice a good placement for you it does suggest that friends are really good people to set you up with other people okay so let them hook you up 
and also friends can be uh, especially good people as well for you to uh, even be looking at in a romantic sense it's very possible with a sky like this that a friend becomes more and especially the passion energy it could really take you aback could surprise you if you find yourself in an exchange with a previously platonic person if you are in an established bond i look at this and it just says a feeling that you are in love with your best friend it will just become that much more evident to you hello fabulous taurus this week your ruling planet venus is going to change signs and what we also have happening is mercury moving into a fellow earth sign or being in fellow earth signs speaking in harmony with neptune so few things here first is venus your ruling planet wherever your ruling planet goes so do you venus at the very top of your sky this to me does say a real perspective and a real sense of moving towards a bigger picture for yourself a bigger picture for your life and a real sense of momentum as well in every area of life now this could include romantically if you are in an established bond you're making big plans together if you're open to meeting someone new it's people who've actually achieved something that you admire or maybe even some bosses as well that are going to be particularly interesting to you now uh, but with this mercury speaking with neptune i just love this this to me says that you're making great plans for your future you're considering positive outcomes you're considering what you could do now and you're inspired you have faith you feel a sense of meaningfulness in what you're doing now knowing that it will manifest into bigger and better things as you move forward so this is the time to dream and put things into place if you are in an institute of higher learning this is where you could just be in your zone and feel a tremendous amount of support within that environment and especially if you're trying to do any travel long distance travel in particular this is the time when plans could come together really nicely hello fabulous gemini this week the sun moving through a super romantic part of the sky will speak in harmony with jupiter in your opposite sign i mean this has a love romance flirtation written all over it and it's going to be one of the stronger energies this month especially for you you add to this this other harmonious energy we have playing out with mars in an air sign uh, speaking with Uranus uh, and even Mercury your ruling planet speaking with Neptune all of these harmonious conversations it does suggest that a part of you may very well feel that you've either met the one or you are with the one if there's any like sort of resolution that needs to be made with someone that you love with a partner whether it's a business partner or romantic a committed relationship this is the time when a little bit of willingness a little bit of bravery even uh, you know broaching a subject that otherwise would be a little bit sensitive uh, being able to do that can go a really long way towards creating an environment creating an experience where you feel um, that much more understood by this other person for those of you open to meeting someone new I mean this kind of sky could have you feeling like you have met the one now keep in mind mercury is in shadow mercury will later this month go retro and uh, so what this does suggest that things might not be com completely crystal clear just yet but there's a whole lot of reasons for a whole lot of hope and so that's hope that you absolutely can hold on to so yes flirt have fun that really is key now and enjoy yourself and in that process you may very well meet somebody who ends up being very important for you for the long term hello fabulous cancer this week we've got lots of activity happening beautiful activity happening for you it is mercury in your opposite sign speaking in harmony with neptune that has you believing in love or at least taking some action making some statement all for the glory of love really i might date myself a little bit with that reference but that's okay uh, as i look at this particular sky it does say that a part of you might feel just positively smitten feel like you want to take some action do something to improve your circumstances if you are in an established bond this absolutely is a time of dreaming of the possibilities dreaming of the things that you could do together and communicating these ideas like making plans brainstorming this is the type of thing i'm seeing with a sky like this especially if you are with a partner most likely romantic but even a business partner as well really good energy to undertake these endeavors now if you are somebody 
somebody open to meeting someone new. I mean, this to me says things like, I gotta say online connections, internet dating, um, or even just social media connections. All of these can go very well for you, or at the very least, inspire hope, inspire belief that more love is possible. What I'm really excited about this energy as well is that there's a sense now of belief, of belief that people are good, that people are on your side. Now, this is in terms of a general sense, but also more specifically as well. There's a sense now that things and people in particular can be part of improving your life. There's a belief in the bigger picture of life as well. And that ensures that there's just a little bit of enough of magic to make things go, especially with others, that much more beneficial, mutually beneficial at that. Hello, Fabulous Leo. This week, we've got the sun in fellow fire sign Sag speaking in harmony with Jupiter. This says that you have a real sense of possibility and also real confidence as well. That's the energy that's really highlighted under the sky. There's a lot of confidence. There's a lot of belief. And this can actually work very much to your advantage. So words are key, okay? Words are like diamonds right now for you and you absolutely can be incredibly persuasive in whatever it is that you're trying to convince another person uh, towards. And so you want to harness this energy, particularly towards flirtation if you're open to meeting someone new. Uh, just in flirting, it seems to be especially fun right now, but also I would say artistic endeavors as well. If you are an artist or you use your creativity towards your prosperity, uh, towards your career, then this is a time when some pitch uh, to have your art, whether it's reach more people or to make a more impact, uh, this is a time when a pitch could go especially well. You might have to overcome a little bit of nerves, but it does look like for artists out there, they're really going to enjoy this week personally, creatively, but also professionally as well. Um, elsewhere in the sky though, where it comes to matters of love, now the flirting part we've got down with the Sun-Jupiter connection. Online connections can go really well. But we've also got Mars in your opposite sign speaking in harmony with Uranus. Now I look at this and this is absolutely the possibility of love just seeming to come out of nowhere and showing up for you. This is the possibility of the love that you have surprising you in delightful ways. Uh, this is possibly related to a trip or going overseas in some way. And so as I look at this, it is possible that your partner wants to take you on a trip or you connect with somebody who lives far away or is from somewhere that you would consider far away. But this energy is very fun and it's also very quick. And what I mean by that is the surprise element. Now, we've got the sun and Saturn in the sky. Both of these planets are dancing with Jupiter. So it's not necessarily that something could come and leave very quickly, uh, but if you want something to be long-term, we've got that supportive energy. But what I really like now is that it really could be that love just catches you off guard and comes out of nowhere. And I like to say there are not enough surprises in life and you'll be really glad for this one. Hello, Fabulous Virgo. This week, your ruling planet Mercury is speaking in harmony with Neptune. Now, Mercury right now is in fellow Earth sign Capricorn. This to me is super flirty. Neptune in your opposite sign. Now, that has to do with partnerships, flirting, connecting, romantic words, romantic exchanges. I absolutely love this. If you are somebody in an established bond, make sure you are planning that time with them to do something fun or even just to have that time with them to enjoy uh, in a more personal setting because it does look like the romance energy, uh, the love energy is very much on high. It could even be that one of you is motivated to make some sort of a romantic declaration that it just seems to please you. It's like deeply warming on a level of soul. Now, those of you who are open to meeting someone new, this is very dreamy energy, but very flirty energy as well. The chance of meeting someone and getting your flirt on and, you know, just feeling like it's gone exceptionally well 
absolutely is there. Okay, so you can enjoy it. This energy is not as permanent as I would like to see for the long term, but that really doesn't matter if you're in the moment and you're having fun. If you're in the moment, you're doing what you want, you're having fun, then you don't have any regrets going forward or regrets in the future. So just enjoy yourself. It looks to be fun. It looks to be light. There seems to be a, an element of, of fantasy around what is transpiring now but it also brings a lot of happiness as well now elsewhere in the zodiac we are also going to have mars speaking in harmony with uranus now mars right now moving through part of the sky that has to do with work and it has to do with your health as well so where it comes to work some work assignments that you know might be one time might be short term but carry a lot of money with them a potential of prosperity particularly the type of prosperity that has to do with commissions or one time contract that seems very high very possible right about now and also where it comes to matters of health this could be a time when you're really empowering yourself making some change particularly a change that involves some release so if it involves letting go of a bad habit in particular uh, there will be that motivation and the results will be really quick and you will like them very much hello fabulous libra this week we have got jupiter in your sign speaking in harmony with the sun this is beautiful this is beautiful for you because it does suggest an appreciation and awareness of how you can create greater blessings for yourself how can you tap into that jupiter that's moving through your sign and jupiter moves through your sign uh, once every 12 to 13 years or so and when Jupiter moves through your sign for about 12 to 13 months and this time 13 months you're gonna get a 13 month cycle you're in the middle of it right now um, you have certain high points you have certain points that show you which way the wind is blowing and then you have some points that show you how you can use this energy and tap into this energy to really bring forward some of the greater promises that Jupiter holds well this is one of those times that has to do with empowering yourself taking action to make things that much better there's a level here of excitement there's a level here of joy there's a level here of being connected to your heart that seems to bring a sense of aliveness to what you're doing and I feel that you're going to be really propelled towards improving your circumstances that much more this is also summoning a measure of confidence wherever it is that you need to show that you know what you're doing that you're confident enough in what you're doing this is where you are going to find a way to summon things to bring things together and express yourself in a beautiful way in a strong way and in a persuasive way at that now we do have also mars moving through a super romantic part of your sky flirty part of the sky speaking with uranus in your opposite sign so this is very flirty okay uh and this is very hopeful as well but this is uh really love can catch you very much off guard you and the leos out there very blessed very love catching off guard kind of energy available to you and when i look at this for you in particular there's a sense of being in the moment there's a sense of uh the body as well like sort of feeling the butterflies if you will being very awakened very much by surprise and i think that it's a surprise and especially it's a moment that i think you're going to love very much whether you're in an established bond or you're with somebody new if you have a partner and you've been looking for the right moment to give them some lovely surprise this week really would be it hello fabulous scorpio this week we've got a super exciting sky we've got lots going on now and what i absolutely love about the sky for you is there's this sense of growth this sense of moving forward uh, and this sense now of knowing some deep truth about yourself and knowing that you can use this to your advantage so there's a bunch of things happening in the sky this week so one of the things that i love for you is the fact that mercury will speak with neptune now this says to me a key conversation that gives you hope that inspires you creatively in particular if anyone out there is going to find themselves in a creative zone it certainly would be you this also could be the potential of reaching an agreement uh, especially if you use your creativity or you're an artist of any kind reaching some sort of a key agreement that's going to help you and strengthen the work that you do and so whether it involves signing a contract or whether it involves actually just having a conversation very spontaneous very right person at the right time in the right place 
place that kind of energy is available to you now do keep in mind mercury is in shadow which means whatever shows up now you will be returning to uh, but that doesn't mean that it can't be absolutely good and that there's a whole lot that you can be hopeful for also where it comes to matters of a heart matters of love Venus right now is going to move into the very bottom of your sky. This has to do with the past. It has to do with what's going on close to home as well. And so if you are in an established bond, there's going to be that desire for just alone time, being with this person that you love uh, and just really having a sense of, okay, we, what we have is very special to us. And so we are going to carve out the sacred space and make sure that we nurture it. There's going to be that momentum. Uh, if you're open to meeting someone new, I look at this and it looks like you are absolutely looking towards the past. You're looking at what was. Uh, and sometimes this can work to your advantage. In fact, as we move further into the month, I'll be here to talk about it then. But it does look like the past brings some of the greater love blessings. So it's not always bad, right? It's not bad necessarily to look at the past. But it's really important at the same time to stay in the moment. Sometimes the point of looking at the past is to let it go. Sometimes it is to reawaken it. Right about now, I think there's not going to be a lot of certainty. It's just going to be some nostalgia that visits you. Just know that ultimately you are looking at what was through a certain lens and just give it a little bit of time. The clarity and a really much more balanced perspective will find you. Hello, fabulous Sagittarius. This week, we have got the sun moving through your sign, speaking with your ruling planet in harmony. Uh, and this to me says that really, if all the people out there who's going to feel luck, it certainly will be you. Lots of lucky energy playing out now, especially luck through friends. Now, if this is birthday week for you, happy birthday. But if this is birthday week for you, this is setting up an environment, a celestial environment where you are really going to be encouraged to empower yourself and use your inspiration to create all kinds of great blessings for yourself. So it tends to be a really positive year, really hopeful. Lots of good things tend to transpire, especially when you take action. For the other Sages out there, if your birthday is nowhere near right about now, you will still benefit from this energy, no worries. But especially this week, this week is the more concentrated time frame for you. So this can be a time when it is a friend who is part of us facilitates great blessings for you. But also, as I look at this, it looks like there's something here that is deeply personal, that is deeply about you, that is deeply about you knowing yourself and having sort of a higher sense of the possibilities of your life and knowing that you can trust that and taking action from that place. You absolutely, that is key here. Have the faith have the confidence that's with you, but make sure you're backing it up with action, taking some bold step. Now, I am seeing that it is very possible that part of this bold step will be connected to uh, money, wanting to improve your financial circumstances. There's a lot of hopeful energy around that. We've got Mercury moving through a part of the sky that has to do with income and spending, speaking with Neptune. So there's a few ways this can play out. I would be mindful of any kind of large purchases right now, especially if they're oriented towards you think you need to spend this to make money. The fullness of time, it may not work out that way. It looks very possible. Not that you would necessarily, you do have Saturn in your sign, uh, but the Sun and Saturn both right now are dancing with Jupiter. That can make a person very hopeful. And Neptune speaking with Mercury in the part of the sky that has to do with spending could make you not necessarily appreciate the bigger picture sometimes, right? Uh, so just it's all about balance. That's really what it comes down to. But at the same time, this could be a very hopeful omen, a very hopeful boost of income that comes in. So as much as this can suggest money going out, this also could be money coming in. And especially where there's a more balanced perspective, there absolutely could be a sense of, yeah, okay, there's lots to spend, you've got to spend, but you have that balance, you know that more is coming in as well. Um, and that's what I love about this energy. There's some faith there, but there's also this sense of abundance there. And that is really, when you are at your generous self, you are at your very best. That seems to be when you're at your happiness and there's lots of generous energy playing out now. Now, where it comes to matters of love, um, having, look, having the sun in your sign speaking with Jupiter can have you taking all kinds of chances in the context of love. 
But I also think that Mars in a part of the sky for you that has to do with conversations and connections, speaking with Uranus in a surprising, a sort of a surprise that goes very well, that seems very pleasant, that might take a little bit of work on one person's part or the other. You might have seen which way the wind is blowing. This can be really nice if you're open to meeting someone new. So if you're open to meeting someone new, the online world, internet dating, online uh, social connections can be really great. Also, you could run into somebody in your neighborhood like just make sure you're you know doing your own errands uh, getting out and about uh, even though it's cold in some parts of the world right about now <laughs> regardless make sure that you're out and about and you could literally just find yourself in the right place in the right moment having a, a, an exchange that ends up being meaningful to you in some way particularly a flirty exchange with you know real potential for the bigger picture and if you are in an established bond it does look like all that hopeful energy uh, is bringing a sense of plans. And it may be your partner, actually, who is part of uh, creating a sense of, okay, let's spend money in this way to make money. It could be your partner that is very much of these plans. But again, just make sure everything balances out like as soon as possible. Uh, and also try to avoid any, uh, avoid any like really large purchases right now. Mercury is in shadow. Mercury will go retro later this month. And so... If it is something that you are meant to have, it'll find its way to you. And that's the beauty of it, really. In many ways, really, I've heard it said that a lot of people think they need to have in order to do, in order to be. Uh, this is Yann Levan Zant to quote her, but actually it is that you need to be in order to do, in order to have. Hold that truth now. You have exactly what you need for this moment to create even more and more prosperity for yourself. Hello, fabulous Capricorn. This week, we've got Mercury moving through your sign, speaking with Neptune in harmony. This to me says the mind is particularly active. You're making plans. Uh, there's a sense now of having some sort of a stream of consciousness taking place now that absolutely could work to your advantage. So any kind of brainstorming that needs to happen, new ideas, this really would be it. This also could be getting a message, whether it is a phone message, if people do that that much anymore, uh, and or a uh, an email message, uh, getting some message that gives you a lot of hope, makes you feel like there's all kinds of possibilities available to you, uh, that can also allude to some type of agreement that could be made. Now that could happen in a professional sense. In a more personal sense, we do have um, this part of the sky speaking uh, to siblings, cousins, neighbors. One of these people uh, could be the bearers of some good news happening in their life that seems to delight you very much. Now, elsewhere in the zodiac, we have Venus moving into a part of the sky for you that has to do with income and spending as well. We've also got Mars continuing in this part of the sky, speaking with Uranus. Now, this could have been with Mars over the past few weeks moving through this part of the sky can sometimes create a certain urgency around making money and spending money. Uh, so that might have been there. This to me is sort of a payoff moment, if you will, where uh, things turn around very much in your favor very quickly and it feels very much worth it. All the effort, all the things, all the struggles that you might have had to do over the last few weeks now in a financial sense seem to have a payoff, uh, seem to bring with them a very quick and positive result. But having Venus moving into this part of the sky is really good. This is a blessing energy and it means now and over the next few weeks, you can expect yourself to uh, acquire more things, more beautiful things, uh, and also very possibly to create greater prosperity for yourself as well. Now, where it comes to matters of love, and especially if you're open to meeting someone new, it is in the matters of creating prosperity for yourself that you could make a love connection happen for yourself. So again, it really is key. Just trust yourself, do what you're doing, do what you want to improve your life in any way that feels right to you and see how it is that that ends up benefiting your life. Also uh, with the sky, if you are in an established bond, it looks like some financial plans are being made amongst the two of you, or it could very well be that it is your partner uh, that uh, gives you, that presents to you, uh, rather expensive, possibly expensive, but certainly a very delightful gift. Hello, Fabulous Aquarius. This week, we've got Mars in your sign speaking with Uranus. This is such beautiful energy. 
uh, such positive energy at that and a real sense of you having the right ideas, being empowered, have the right words in the right moment. Also being in the right place at the right time very much with this energy to absolutely empower you, to propel you forward. So this is the time when you absolutely want to be giving to your ideas brainstorming, writing in particular, very blessed now. If you have been looking towards, you know, any kind of media attention, uh, securing some kind of media appearance, this is the time when it can go exceptionally well. There are times that's not the case. This is the time when it can go exceptionally well. You'll really like the results. You'll like what comes forward in you and you'll likely have a whole lot of fun as well. Or you could just attract it. It could just show up for you. Uh, it could be the case that you're just walking around your neighborhood, literally walking around your neighborhood and someone puts a, a microphone in your face uh, to ask for your opinion. Like Stuff like that can happen under a sky like this, but it looks to be a lot of fun. It looks to delight you at that. Now, what I also really love about this sky is the fact that Venus is entering your sign. This is huge. Like, let's get the celebration going. This is really, really huge. It does suggest that love arrives. You're feeling the love. You're looking better than you have in maybe a year, right? People are going to start telling you, complimenting you. Uh, and there's an energy there of generosity and possibility that can be really beautiful as well. And so having Venus in your sign is really really good if you're looking to attract love into your life because it will just show up for you. You will have the, the magic. You will have the sparkle that will attract love to you. So just be yourself, go out into the world and let it show up. It will show up for you. And for those of you who are in an established bond, I mean, this is the time when you absolutely would be feeling the love, feeling the love, feeling like that love is with you. And it certainly is. Hello, fabulous Pisces. This week, we've got some beautiful things playing out in the sky for you. One is the fact that Mercury will be speaking in harmony with Neptune in your sign. I mean, this really is all about friendship. Friendships is a big theme this week for all of us because of all the stuff that's happening in a friendship-oriented sign. Uh, but for you in particular, we've got Mercury moving through a friendship part of your sky. This also can be really good for any kind of groups that you belong to, memberships you may hold. This is the time to tap into uh, the possibilities of those particular memberships that you may have or actually just get involved in the groups that you're already involved in. Um, do something a little bit more active. Go out, be a joiner if possible <laughs> right about now. I think it'll bring a lot of warmth uh, and it'll bring a lot of inspiration into your life. And especially if you're part of some kind of group that has any kind of spiritual leanings, this is where you could have a key conversation, get the right uh, sort of interaction that ends up being just on a spiritual level, very meaningful for you, perhaps even transformative for you as well. We've also got Mars moving through a part of the sky that is sort of your home in the sky. Speaking with Uranus, this to me says, I mean, a financial surprise could just show up for you. It looks good, so don't worry. It looks like a positive thing, but it is very possible now that some something you did way long ago that you forgot about now brings you an opportunity. Uh, it is very possible now that some money-making uh, opportunity prospect shows up for you and it'll be based on what other people, the goodwill that you've already sown long ago. Now, where it comes to matters of love, Venus is moving into this very quiet part of the sky, your home in the sky. And for you, this means that love gets very personal, love gets very quiet. This tends to be more a time of understanding what was and clearing the way for the new. This can be really good if there's anything that needs forgiveness, that needs to be cleared up, that needs to be understood so you can let it go. If you're in an established bond to feel that much closer to the person that you love. And if you're open to meeting someone new, it looks like any kind of prospects you might meet now and in the weeks to come, well, it looks like you're holding them very close to the chest. It looks like it's not necessarily the time to broadcast who it is that you've met. I mean, really don't do that. That would not be good for the, for the bond and the growth of the bond. But it is a really good time to sort of keep things a little bit to yourself and nurture them and see where they go. Well, thank you so much to all signs out there. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.